Hello! Uh, so for the past couple weeks, I've been working on this voice-activated coffee maker, and, well... Let's just say I'm in the middle of a redesign. And I thought now would be a good time to do a video on the H-Bridge, which is a huge part of my project, um, how awesome they are, and how they can be used for motor control. Have you ever seen a motorized object that could go in one direction, but then reverse direction? Well, whatever that object was, it was most likely using an H-bridge. They are used to control a motor's rotational direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's just say we have a regular old DC motor um, that uses the old current through a wire trick to create magnetic fields. The polarity of those magnetic fields, north or south, depend entirely on which way the current is flowing. So for brush DC motors, if we send current through the input, it'll go through the output to ground and it will turn in one direction. But if we send current through the output, through the input to ground, it will turn in the opposite direction. But wires, how do they switch on their own? Transistors. Um, we can use N and P channel MOSFETs on each lead of the motor to control it. So stay with me here. Um, we have each lead of the motor hooked up to both an N and P channel MOSFET. As we may or may not know by now, P channels are usually used for controlling the high side of a circuit or the positive current and N channels are used to control the ground. So each one of these leads is neutral until I choose which FET I want to turn on. So this is a regular old little DC motor. Um, let's say that this is the input and this is the output. There is no fixed input and output for DC motors, but let's just say these are fixed. Um, so if I turn on the P channel for this one and the N channel for this one, it will turn in one direction. And if I turn on the P channel for this one and the N channel on this one, it'll turn in the opposite direction. So this is a linear actuator I made a couple days ago for the coffee maker. Um, when I turn this gear clockwise, the shaft moves up. And when I move it counterclockwise, the thing moves down. Um, I'm just gonna use this for a little demonstration because it's easier to see which way the motor is moving compared to this thing. Now for the H bridge part. So for parts, you're gonna need two N channel MOSFETs, two P channel MOSFETs, and four 10K resistors. So I'm gonna start with the N channel MOSFETs. The 10K resistors are for the gates. Um, some places you'll read that you don't need one at the gates, but in my experience, every time I don't put one on, it won't turn back off. From left to right, it's uh, gate drain source. So source goes to ground for end channels. So now for the P channels. The pinout for the P channels are the same, but this time the source gets the positive five volts. And instead of the gate getting a 10K resistor to negative, the P channels are gonna get a 10K resistor going to positive. And I'm gonna connect the two grounds real quick before I forget. And now for the gate pins. Um, so for the end channel MOSFETs, I'm gonna use even numbers, so two, it's going to the first MOSFET, end channel. Second end channel is gonna to go to pin four. First P channel is gonna to go to pin three. And the second P channel is going to go to pin five. Okay, so I wanna talk about some of the code real quick. Um, so I have the first end channel going to pin two. So we are initializing all of the N and P channel MOSFETs over here and assigning them pins. So the first P channel I have going to pin three and the second N channel going to pin four. P channel number two is going to pin five. And then secondly, I'm declaring all of these MOSFETs as outputs by using the pin mode function, P1, P2, N1, N2. So here in the loop, I have uh, two digital write functions. The first is for um, P2, that is P channel MOSFET 2 and N channel MOSFET 1. So um, P channel MOSFETs are activated by a low signal, 
and end channels are activated by a high signal. So right now I'm turning on P2, which is this one, and N1, which is this one. So, so let's see what happens. Great, so now I'm gonna use the linear actuator. Okay, so I had to uh, change some transistors around because of some structural issues with my breadboard, but it's the same thing. Um, so here I have the linear actuator. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to do P1 and N2 first. So that will screw this thing counterclockwise. <laughs> Fell out. And now I'm going to spin it counterclockwise, so I'm going to change to P2 and N1. Well guys, that is it for this one. Um, if you have any questions, just go ahead and leave them down in the comments, and I'm going to leave the code down in the description. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.